Yarmir Yager on the Mount Rushmore of Penguins greats today finally got what he had coming. The Penguins put 68 into the rafters for good, something that had been long overdue. I want to say thanks to Dominica, my girlfriend. Uh, she's too young to remember I played in Pittsburgh, but I, <laughs> but I told her all the stories, so don't worry about it. We all know Yager essentially forced his way to being drafted by the Penguins to play alongside his idol, Mario Lemieux. We all know he went on to help bring back-to-back -back cups to Pittsburgh. He got a heart, five scoring titles, four in a row from 98 to 01. It's easy to have some recency bias, but don't forget, Yager was truly special. He's also credited with keeping the Penguins in Pittsburgh. In the late 90s, the Penguins were in a dire financial situation. But in 99, with a groin tear and essentially one leg, an injured Yager gave the Penguins faithful hope against the heavily favored Devils when he shocked everyone stepping on that ice. With not just the tying goal, but the winning goal, he pushed it to Game 7 where he recorded a pair of assists and helped the Penguins move on. The revenue generated by an extra series literally saved the Penguins penguins from bankruptcy. So while Yager has obviously cemented his place in Penguins history, there was still one piece of unfinished business. After days of lead up, special moments of taking the ice for practice, this cool moment with Latang. Just say something. What, what's going on? Uh, all my life I wore 68 because you were my guy growing up. Like it's Thanks, man. Appreciate pretty it. That's special. why you got the hair. Right? That's why you got the yeah. It finally happened. Yarmir Yager will forever be in the Pittsburgh rafters. This had me absolutely pumped as a Penguins fan. Even better, not only did they come out rocking his number and the mullets, which that alone was great, but the man himself came out for warmies at age 52. Just not much I can even say. To have these shots of Yager once again in a Penguins sweater before an actual NHL game chills. I just wish he could have jumped out there and actually played, but he eventually got a final lap and a final salute. Doesn't get much better than that. But we still had a game to play. So with the traveling Yagers in the building, let's get to it. Now, this was a tight one. The Kings, I would say, got the better looks early, out shooting the Penguins. But after what was the second Dubois penalty of the period, this time called for roughing, it would send the Penguins to the power play again, where immediately Carlson to Crosby, and it's a missile to open up the scoring. Sid gets all of it, his 31st of the year, and he gets the party started. And that was actually about it for the first, so we'll head over to the middle frame, where right out of the gate, Kopitar down, alone, and Latang called for holding would put the Kings up a man. And we actually caught Yager in the booth with an F-bomb. So we were... So, oh, fuck. Sorry. <laughs> player came out of you right there. Like, sorry, I was just like... <laughs> That's, that's pretty good. But overall, nothing crazy in the second. The Kings were certainly the busier team. Byfield with a great chance, but went wide. But overall, the story of the second, and really the game, was the special teams. Sid with the hook but the Penguins would kill that one off. Laferriere with a trip, and the Pens would kill it off, with neither team getting much done on the power play. As a whole, though, the Kings outshot the Penguins 13-7 and got the better chances. But ultimately, on both sides, it was the goalies that shut it down. So, we'll head over to the third and final period. Where early, it's Laferriere to Dubois, and he's stopped by Jari. Shortly after, this time it's Arvidsson. As early, Jari was sharp again. As the Kings were certainly putting on more shots again. But five minutes in, Laferriere gets called for tripping on Malkin and the Penguins were back on the power play. A chance to make it a two-goal game, but no. It is truly bad this year. As you could have guessed, they couldn't get it done again. But at least it killed off some time, right? Well, with six to go, Doughty to Kempe and they score. Kempe fires it, goes off of Raquel's skate, and we had ourselves a tied hockey game as the Kings make the Penguins pay. With that said, immediately after trying to clear it, Trevor Moore would end up getting another penalty, a delay of game as this one got out, and the Penguins gifted another opportunity, a fifth power play. And yet again, just <laughs> ridiculous. I don't even know how a stacked team like this cannot get the power play going. Even worse, right here, Eller would give it up and the Kings the other way a two 
Juan won. Kempe again, and he scores again. His second of the night. It's shorthanded, and the Kings with back-to-back -back goals. I try not to be biased, but man, this is getting frustrating. With that said, the Penguins would call time. They pulled Jari, and while they pushed near the end, as time expired, the Kings would take it 2-1 after beating Boston last night to come here and spoil Yager night. Who, honestly, get this man out there on the power play. It certainly couldn't get worse. It's just, again, a frustrating team in the Penguins right now, but nonetheless, awesome to see Yager back in the Berg. Happy to have 68 up in the rafters. Just wish they could have pulled this one off for him. But... Yeah, that's about it for this one. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it very much, and I will see you in the next one.